Holy greetings, my good friends. I bless God today for gift of life and the good health, and I thank every one of you as a contributing factor in uh, sharing our videos and your comments. May God bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, I have a, a very brief contribution. Before I proceed, I want to say this. If you must stand on the path of truth any day, any time, you must behave like a blind man. You must behave like a blind man who doesn't see the faces of anybody. So you must embark on a journey of truth any day, any time. And you must prevail. It will help you to fly in good colors. Now, we have a trending issue on social media, you know, for two days now, concerning a young man, his corpse was brought to a shrine because he was a debtor to somebody. He owed somebody and he refused to pay. Well, I didn't get the detail of the business and I've not gotten the information from anybody. But the key point here is that he owed somebody and refused to pay. And the person reported him to the shrine, to the deity. Probably they warned him several he refused to come as they used to do. And his life was taken. His life was cut short. I want to declare my stand so that the living will learn from this ugly incident. Hear me today, we have freedom of worship in Nigeria actually. So you are free to worship anything you like. But you must not step beyond their boundaries. That is the essence of freedom of worship. I don't know the person that reported his death or to the shrine. And I don't want to speak against anybody's belief. If your faith is in the shrine or any deity, you are good to go. If you are a Christian and you have your dependency on shrine to recover your debts, this message is for you. Then those who do not believe in Christianity, if you can also pick some points here, the door is open. You are highly welcome. Let us look at these pictures. The major problem we have, or one of the major problems, we have too many problems in this country. One of the major problems we have in this particular country and this part of the world, this horrible part of the world, is bad governance. Bad rulers. Not leaders. If not the clueless people, some clueless people we have in government, there will be no need for deity killing somebody because of money. EFCC is an agency fighting corruption. They go for bigger and the higher amounts. And there are some human rights agencies that can equally fight for smaller amounts for the common people in the streets. But we are in a lawless state. So anybody can do anything he likes. Somebody who owes somebody can claim I cannot pay, do whatever you like. And the person that is being owed can go to any extent to recover his money. You know, this thing should not be, you know, should not be done, should not be applauded. Why must you kill somebody? Because the person owes you. Why must you take a life? Most people have gotten reports that went to deity and they reported somebody that owed them. Most of them are Christians. You now live your God. You feel that he cannot do anything. Because of impatience, we want it to happen at our own time. The way we want it, where we want it, and how we want it. You want to teach that person a lesson. The person will know the efficacy of your personality. 
The person will know the stuff you are made of. You will let hell loose because the person owes you or challenge you in spite of the money the person owes you. Do you know who I am? Do you know what I'm capable of? I've seen somebody boasted to another person. Do you know how many people I have killed a couple of years ago because of this thing you did? Somebody said this openly and is allowed to be moving around. So what am I saying, my beloved ones? There is nothing in this life that wants human life. No material thing, no mundane things of this life wants human life. Human life is sacrosanct. Human life is sacrosanct. It's sacred. Anything somebody takes from you can be recovered. If you plan to kill somebody and that fellow hears it, they can just, how much is the money? 10 million. Oh yeah, take 15 million. Can you let him be? It happens. Lost money can be recovered, but lost life cannot be recovered. The correction is for the living, not the dead. Lost life is an irreparable loss. And if you take away life, you are God. And let me say this, by the way. Do you know that everybody is a debtor to God? We all got debts. Everybody is a debtor to God. He wants you to live a good life. So you all got in one way or the other. Have you fulfilled all the promises? Are you going on the path he wants you to go? So you are a debtor to God because you are a caretaker to this life. He entrusted unto your care. But most people are doing what they like. They are they, they, they rebel against God. They are rebellions against God. But God allows you to live. And somebody trespasses. Somebody offends you. Somebody challenges you. The next thing that came to your mind is to teach him a lesson he can never forget. He will not live to tell the story. Now, what is the benefit? That you shed blood to recover your debts. What's the benefit? Have taken life, your hands are soaked in the blood. How much is that money? It is possible that one can recover debts and he goes to sleep and never wakes up the next morning. Very, very possible. Nobody has finished what he owes in this life before death. It comes unaware. So, if your shrine is not a shrine that can inflict sickness to a stubborn fellow, that can cripple a stubborn fellow, at least the person will not learn his lesson while living, then that deity is a wicked deity. A deity that can take life to serve as a deterrent to others. Nobody has the right to take life. Nobody has the license to take life. I don't support people who are doing, you know, if you take somebody's thing, you know, by force, you kill them not to return it. You owe somebody and you are still trying to terminate somebody's life. I don't support that. Of course, Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 21, it says that the evil, Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 21, that the evil will slay the wicked. So if you have a wicked mind, Isaiah 48, 22 says, no peace for the wicked. If you owe somebody you don't want to pay, I'm not, I don't back you with this message. I don't back you with this message. But I'm trying to tell people, most people that are applauding this particular video, making comments, blaming the dead, speaking ill of the dead. There are so many of us that are faulted in one way or the other. So many of us are, are horrible in this life that we don't deserve to live. But God allows us to live. There are people who owe somebody amount bigger than whatever amount that this man was killed because of. Yet, the people they owe that debt did not kill them. So why must you take life? Because of money. Because of material things. That we did not come with in this life. And we shall never depart with. We came empty handed and we are living empty handed. If you are a Christian and you have that belief that God takes care of you, the God that provides for you will sustain you. Allow him to fight your battle. Proverbs chapter 30, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 31 says, How horrible will it be 
for one to fall in the hands of Almighty God. Proverbs 10 31. How horrible will it be for one to fall in the hands of Almighty God? When God goes after your debtors, it will be horrible. Because if a demon attacks you or any evil agent, any wicked person, God can protect you. But if God attacks those who come after you, the problem we have is unbelief. That's the problem we have. Because many people are trying to talk this way now. Many people will not embark on this journey. Reporting those who owe them. The economy is bad. We have the economic crunch. We have political upheavals. Everything has collapsed in this country. So going to deity to kill those who offend you. Look at bloodshed everywhere. And this is another methodology. So many lives have been taken already. It's a normal thing to report to some agencies that will help you to recover this money, to recover these debts. Unless the business that brought this ugly incident was not a legit one. Unless the business was, was not a legitimate business. If it was, there are right channels to go. There are the right organs, right agencies to approach. Regal steps to take instead of taking somebody's life. And people are bold enough to comment and they support. If God says this moment that all my debtors will die this minute, do you think anybody will leave? I'm asking you. If God says all my debtors, because you owe God. Beat your chest and say that you don't owe God. So God will come after you. You owe God. So let us not categorize that somebody owes somebody. Many people are wicked. There are people who behave, who live this life without conscience. They will meet their water load. I tell you the truth. Don't be the one to take his life. Don't be the one to take her life. Do not say, don't be guilty of blood because you are answerable to God. You cannot create a single hair in somebody's head. Then why must you take life? If you categorize the crime this young man had committed before his life was taken by this deity, maybe he had committed the worst crime, abomination, fine. In the sight of God, he doesn't judge that way. If God wants to kill everybody who committed abominable acts, you must go down. I must go down. That you are living is by God's mercies, not by merit. It's by God's mercies. So why must you take laws into your hand? If you categorize this evil now, that this young man did, that nobody had done this kind of thing, and nobody can do it and go score free as far as you are concerned, take it easy. If you go to bed tonight, you have lost everything you owe until you wake up in the morning. And he that holds tomorrow, that knows where the bottom of your life is, is God. And that same God who says, in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20, he saw that the soul that sinners shall die. But he didn't ask you to kill them. Bible says that he has the power to destroy both body and soul. The soul that sinners shall die. That, that's the one in giving to the sinners, the wicked people, those that owe people that do not want to pay and they even want to terminate the person's life, their creditor. No. The same God who said that the soul that sinners shall die also said in Ezekiel 18 23, I don't take any pleasure in the death of a sinner. It doesn't please me when a wicked man dies. I want them to repent. My dear, if you cannot do this kind of thing, that is by the grace of God. There are those Satan is using. There are those the enemy is using to destroy other people's future, other people's business, or to frustrate other people's efforts. But that shouldn't warrant taking of life. Wake me up from sleep. Call me any day, any time. I must declare my stand. I must tell you the truth. And only the truth will set you free. This one has happened. But this message is for others who will like to tell these parts. Please. It is not a good one at all. It's not a good omen.
when the people that brought in John chapter 8 from verses 1 to 8, the people that brought the woman of Sam, uh, um, the adulterous woman, uh, John chapter 8 from verses 1 to 11, when they brought the woman, they were waiting for command from the master, our Lord Jesus, to stone her to death. But the woman, our Lord Jesus told them, if you know you have not committed sin, he didn't say if you have not committed adultery. If he has said that, some people will be free. They will not be guilty. But he centralized all the sins. Why these people separated sin of adultery separately? They were sins. They were qualified to kill that woman, to stone the woman to death, according to law. But our Lord Jesus brought mercy and he brought grace. He brought mercy and the grace. You deserve mercies of God. I deserve mercies of God. It's by his mercy. So when he asked them, if you have not committed a sin, throw the first stone. There are so many of us who are guilty of bad debts. Of course, you have owed somebody money you cannot pay, the person just forgive it. Some people owe money, the person has not even said, don't worry. But he has not been asking you for that money for years. If everybody should go after their debtors because of any amount, 100,000, 1 million, 2 million, no matter the amount, then nobody will leave. We must learn how to forgive. So we shouldn't allow this to be a norm. What is money? Try to find definition of money. Money is anything that is generally accepted as a medium of exchange of goods and services. There are those who have billions, trillions, but they are not alive today. They are not in good health. Their money cannot give them good health. They are living on drugs. So money is not everything. It's only the love of money that can push one to take life. And also love of money will also make one not to pay somebody he owes. That's wickedness. But allow God to visit, allow God to reward the wicked. Allow him to punish them. So I just want to declare my stand. So definition of money is a printed paper, picture of dead people. It's just a legal tender because of signature. That authority appended on it. That's all. Then, what is the vision of life? Check what life means, human life. To know whether they have comparison. They have no comparison. That's why I said earlier, lost money can be recovered. Anybody can call this young man after this incident. I come and take this how many million? Come and take the amount of money. Now, can he wake up the dead? Can that deity restore the life? No. That spirit, that deity, that shrine cannot restore this life. Make sure that what you are taking is what you can restore. What you have taken is what you can put back. Don't take what you cannot bring back. Don't destroy what you cannot repair. Don't fight a battle you cannot finish. I'm sounding a note of warning even to those who owe somebody. Please don't risk your life. Not everybody will have patience with you. Many people are passing through pains. Some people are, are passing through hell to make money. Don't be a victim. Walk on your path. Don't step into other person's track. If you owe somebody, there are people who may owe you and they will not open up to tell you their predicament. Because of pride. Maybe he doesn't have that money. But to open up to tell you, you will see him. He wears good clothes. Still maintain his cars. And you are not losing level in mind. You are provoked. Your anger grows to the boiling point. Instead of the debtor to tell you, please, I don't look at my situation. But he may not. Not to lose his respect or her respect. There are people who are in that situation. So if you kill him, we thought that the money was there, but he refused to give you. But if you are sure that the person has that money and refuse, there are agencies you can approach. Please, don't kill. Don't kill. Don't take life. Every life has a meaning. Every life is important to God. Because the measurement we use for others, God will use for us. Let God has gotten my debt from somebody who refused to pay. 
almost 400,000 naira. And after prayers, the way occultic people invoke somebody on Miro, listen, it's all about faith. If you believe that powers can invoke, words can invoke powers in the shrine, and the spirits can travel and they take somebody's life, I tell you, the words of your prayers on the altar can equally invoke somebody's spirit. In prayers, I invoke somebody's spirit and they demanded for my money. And I gave him one week. The person surfaced. Somebody had not seen for weeks. Had not seen for months. He had relocated both from his house and the shop in the northern part of Nigeria. But after prayers, I invoke his spirit in prayers. Commanded his spirit to appear. And by faith, I was giving him orders that within one week, I want you to pay this money. This young man appeared from nowhere, started pleading, explaining what he went through and what transpired. And he paid that money and they bought goods and they paid cash of that double of that money. It's all about patience. It's all about patience and the knowing God. To serve God in truth and in spirit. There is nothing God cannot do. What God cannot do does not exist. What God cannot do does not exist. We are in a faithless generation. The love of God is growing cold and the love of money is waxing very strong. That's why you hear all manner of things. Sleeping with the dogs. Shedding blood. Killing human beings. Kidnapping. Pounding children in the mortar and what have you. Love of money. Springing out different evil seeds. Please, my beloved ones, I use this video to correct this misnomer. I use this video to plead with everyone. Please, the land has soaked blood. The land is saturated with the blood. And we can put an sponge to this barbaric behavior, this ungodly act. If we have good governance, things will not be like this. All this killing, insecurity, assassination, revenge mission, and the what have you. Things will not be like this. But when there is confusion everywhere, anything can fly. And that is what we have witnessed. I've said it before. I'm not speaking against anybody's belief. If you believe in deity, go with your deity. But if you're a Christian, please don't step on somebody's toes. Do something that is... What's doing? What's emulating? So if anybody, the way I am now and I owe you, let me tell you how it works. If I don't have the money and I explain in openness of mind, in transparent honesty that I don't have this money, and out of anger you go to your deity and report me, let me tell you your deity will not do anything to me. That's the secret. That this young man who got it, he was guilty. He opened the channel of the attack. But we cannot continue this way. We cannot continue this way. Because if God comes after you for shedding blood, the person he says he will live 50 years, you kill him at the age of 40, you are answerable. Deity is not a task force. Do not forget that. Deity is not a task force. Arose is not a task force. Because if they get this money for you, you have covenant already. There are things you may see in future. That you might not contend with. That's deity for you. The little knowledge I had in this spiritual exercise. It's not a task force. If you have covenant, it may not stop where you want it to stop. Have this at the enshrine it in your heart. Have it at the back of your mind. Not to engage deity to go after your debtors to get money for you. But the continuity of that relationship. It's not what you can press stop like a remote until it will stop. It doesn't work that way. That's the truth I would like you to hear. Live and let live. Both the debtors and the creditors. Please share this video so that we can learn from there. My name is Brother Paul Chibo. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, God's Agenda TV. Follow our Facebook page, God's Agenda Production. Our Instagram, God's Agenda TV. TikTok, God's Agenda TV. May God bless you as you do that. Please stay out of trouble. Do not let anyone deceive you. To whom brain is given, common sense is expected. Remain blessed.
Visit our YouTube channel, God's Agenda TV, to watch all our inspirational videos. Remember to hit the notification button, subscribe, like, and share. God's Agenda Production, your soul is our target. Agenda Production.